watching you and, uh, and Dr. Gandhi in the, in the hearing yesterday, hearing yourselves being quoted, uh -huh. uh, having all these questions asked to various people, and I was wondering if, if you had been able to make comments at that time, what you would have said to Senator Specter or Senator Harkin. Well, I think one point I think that was not really make, uh, clear to the senators uh, was that uh, we actually have quite a lot of data showing effects. Uh, and a lot of time people ask, well, we don't have enough uh, scientific information to make any decision. And, and so, well, on the other end, people will say, well, there hundreds of papers published, and the majority of these papers show no effect at all. Okay, those are not true. First, we have in quite a lot of information on uh, radio frequency radiation and cell phone radiation. That's one thing. Second, most of the data, at least half of the data, show effect. So it's not true that the majority of the data show no effect. Uh, lots of time when you listen to the industry, uh, the comments is that the majority of data show no effect. That is not true. Mm -hmm. uh, unless the people who publish it, I don't know. <laughs> they were saying basically that there isn't enough data to make policy on it. And you're saying there there is now. Mm -hmm. Well, the depending on what policy, I think for uh, precautionary approach pre uh, on on limit use of cell phones or limit exposure to uh, to uh, EMF electromagnetic field. I think at this point we do have uh, very strong indication that we should do it. Even though, because the you don't, we don't need to prove uh, harm, ex existence of harm, in order to recommend uh, less exposure. Uh, so it's better safe than sorry kind of uh, approach. I think that that is important. Mm -hmm. Carrying on with that, um, I know that nine years ago when we interviewed you, you were saying chronic exposure to low levels mm -hmm. may be just as harmful as a short exposure to high level. And now... We have a lot more data to can indicate you, can that. Can talk about that? Uh, well, so that was nine years ago when we talked about this. And at that time, we found data that... You, this is experimental data that you expose an animal or cells to high intensity uh, radiation for a short time will produce the same effect as a long duration, low intensity exposure. So inten the intensity and time can trade. Right? So now, but uh, in the last uh, well, at least ten years, there are in well, as far as I know, there are fifty three publications showing that. Very low intensity radiation or fields can cause effect. At that time, we would say, well, it's impossible to see the effect at this low level. Uh, but now we do. And we have paper. We, uh, well, there are 53 peer reviewed papers uh, indicating that the effect occurs at very low level. Uh, particularly the, the study on, uh, for example, on cancer lymphoma in people who live close to a uh, cell uh, radio tower, uh, AM tower and, uh, and broadcast tower. And uh, those people are exposed to very low level, but uh, radiation for, for a long time. So it's like sometimes can be 24 hours a, a, a day. And there are several studies showing that uh, they have uh, uh, people do develop uh, uh, le leukemia, uh, a, a type of cancer. 
So long-term exposure at even low, very low intensity can lead to uh, harm, health effects. And, and can you talk about the proliferation of sources that we now have that, so, and what does that mean? Um, oh, that's a tremendous increase in, in uh, devices and structures that emit uh, uh, radio wave, uh, low, in, uh, low, extremely low frequency uh, uh, fields. So EMF as a term, uh, we have a tremendous increase in the ambient level in our environment because of all these new uh, structures. And so as I mentioned uh, earlier, is that there was a, a, a study uh, published last month uh, from Finland and they actually go to measure how much energy a person absorb from the environment. Now this is a radio frequency radiation and what, from what sources this radiation uh, came from. So what they found was actually very surprising uh, one third come from your cell phone. Only one third. <laughs> okay. So you use phone, you, you absorb the energy. And one third come from cell phone towers. And the other third, the remaining th one third, came from deck phone, the wireless phone. The, the, can you, um the cordless phone. Cordless phone, yeah, the yeah, the cordless phone they use at home. Uh, people tend to use a long time uh, on on the on the deck phone. Uh, so surprisingly, one third of your energy absorbed from radio energy, radio frequency energy comes from that that source. Now, if you don't, for example, you, you don't use a phone, that means fifty percent <laughs> will come from the cell phone towers and 50% from the deck phone. Mm. So there's no, basically there's no way you can get away from the, the radiation. And in the same study they also look at, uh, for example, ra uh, the amount of radiation inside trains. And hmm, excuse me, it turns out that the train uh, in a confined uh, compartment a lot of people traveling using a mobile phone in the cell phone in the train compartment uh, are actually exposing other people to very high intensity uh, radio frequency radiation. Train is made of metal, so so the the energy will bounce uh, back and forth. It's confined. It, it's not going out. So everything confined inside. Uh, so even though you're not using a phone yourself, you're being exposed. You're secondary. Uh, exposed by the uh, to, to the to the radiation. And that, isn't that the same in cars? Well, car not that many people use. For, well, you, how many people can you sit one side? Uh, sit inside car. Uh, three or four people, even everyone use it, is still is still not not as much as inside a train. They, you can have twenty, thirty people using the same at the same time. They can be on a phone. They can be using a computer which is connected to a wireless connection. Um, and now they're talking about airplanes. Well, airplane too, if it, if it is allowed to do that, <coughs> uh, using a cell phone. And uh, actually, I think there's a report in Japan that showed that they, this bullet train, the Japan, Japanese bullet train, uh, inside the train, uh, the exposure level exceeded the Japanese allowable limit. So it's that much. They don't know what to do with it because everybody, those businessmen traveling from one city to another city, they have to talk all the time to somebody. And so the whole thing become, uh, so everybody's inside a sea of uh, waves, uh, electromagnetic waves. So. I keep thinking we should all wear full body <laughs> Coverings <laughs> of um, absorption yes. material. Uh, yeah, that um, carbon filament material. Yeah, yeah. Well, they people who work uh, on antenna, <coughs> they're protective uh, clothing. You can. It's expensive. Yeah. 
Japanese. They, well, Japanese has actually they have the this type of thing they make into uh, uh, underwear. Yeah, you can buy under uh, RF uh, absorption underwear in Japan. <laughs> they know about the testicular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, the, well. Uh, another thing I think they came out over the last few years is that the people look at the sperms uh, in, uh, in 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 cell phone, people use cell phones and uh, and then they also expose sperms to radio frequency field from cell phone and then they look at the DNA that was damaged the DNA and the sperm usually sperm swim and they swim straight. But if you expose them to uh, radio frequency, uh, mobile phone uh, waves, they swim in circle. <laughs> and then the less sperm, there's a, a decrease in sperm counts in men who put, who put, put the, the phone in the pocket. Uh, so even though your phone is on standby, you're not talking into the phone, you're not using the phone. If it's on standby mode, the phone emits uh, uh, radiation. Intermittently. So, so a sperm who <coughs> swims in circles is not going to find very many eggs, right? <laughs> yeah. Just to wind up, I'm just wondering what, in a nutshell, is your recommendation to the average lay person about the use of cell phones, wireless oh. technology in general? Well, for cell phone, I think it's very easy because it's voluntary. You just limit the use of cell phones. Uh, and then, yeah, I think another recommendation is, is use a headset, uh, this wire that connect your phone to, to your ear.